good Wednesday morning, everybody, and happy 2020. Hope you got up this morning with purpose and some different goals for this year. I don't make New Year's resolution because, honey, we can only live one day at a time. So I resolve today to continue to uh, pray without ceasing like we did last year. We keep that on number one. So if you got to make a list, please put pray without ceasing at the top of your list. Hope you're having a God bless uh, first day of 2020 uh, on this beautiful Wednesday. Look, we're in North Carolina. We got some spring weather or early fall weather. I don't know which, but I tell God, thank you. Because you know what? We don't have to turn that heater on. We ain't got to turn the air conditioner on. We can just open the windows. Uh, not not open the window one part, but, you know, open the blinds so the sun can shine in. We're not going to get too far ahead of ourselves. Because guess what, y'all? It's still winter time. Dece as of December 23rd, I believe it was. So it's winter time. But we've got some spring-like or, or early fall-like weather going on. I love it because... That way, again, I don't have to bundle up to walk out the door, and I don't have to run that heat inside the house. So, we're going to get a dinner going on. You know, I've, I've been sharing with you all throughout now that I had certain things already cooked. I've got my stuffing and my mac and cheese is already cooked. In fact, I got sitting in the fridge thawing. It's been in the freezer since uh, Thanksgiving. So, what I'm going to cook today is going to be um, some turkey wings and drumsticks. And I'm going to bake a ham. And we got some uh, chicken already done from last night. And some quiche. I'm surprisingly, it's still some of this. So we got all kinds of food left over to have for dinner. You need me? Cecilia says, is this yours? Because she thinks... Mine she is... Tell her... We're trying to get my uh, uh, corks, wine cork shoe. Tell her mine is similar. It's just like this. But mine has a black handle. She says she'll... Come talk to you about it later. Oh, okay. <laughs> what was she doing? I have no idea. Okay. Yeah, this this is this one like it'll work. This is just like mine. Anyway, we're trying to I loan my neighbor my corkscrew puller and so she sent me this nice one. I hope she lets me keep it. But mine has a little black handle, but this'll work. Anywho, let's get back to this food because you know what? I've been sitting here talking to the kids and just taking life easy. You know what? Let life happen. Because I said today I'm going to have this food up and running by now. I got it up. It ain't quite running yet. But we're just going to take it, make this a nice leisurely day. We're not going to rush anything. We're just going to um, let it flow. Um, so the things that I do different this year will just happen. If it's noteworthy to mention, we'll talk about it. Otherwise, we're just going to let life happen as it comes. Because it's going to do that. You know, how many of y'all know... That life is going to happen the way it's going to happen, whether we make plans or not, and that we are mindful of it, the way we handle it as it happens, um, is what makes a difference. My granddaughter Lauren asked me this morning uh, if I believe in, you know, certain things a certain kind of way. I told you, you know what? It's just the way. To me, it's just the way things happen and the way people adjust themselves or react or respond to it. So. We can take life's happenings or we can do resolutions and set goals. And hopefully we set goals throughout the year for ourselves because sometimes we have to change up and switch up stuff um, as life goes on. So I don't like to get too locked into resolutions and to goals either. We like to make flexible, uh, reasonable goals, negotiable goals, if you will. Okay, so back to these turkey wings and to this ham. Now this is a shank portion uh, ham that I picked up at. Uh, food line, y'all know I'm a food line girl. Still a food line girl in 2020. Uh, I will be a food line girl until something else comes along that's better. Okay, I always keep it in this bag because I know it's gonna ooze a little. So I'm gonna get it out of here <clears throat> and I'm gonna put it into a pan. And I'm gonna make a, a brown sugar based glaze to cook it because I like my ham with a little bit of a sweet taste to it. And since we're eating ham, we ain't trying to make believe that it doesn't have, you know, all the things that we shouldn't have. And ain't too many things we can cut out of ham. If you're going to eat it, you're going to eat it. So this is a nice shank portion, a very nice shank portion. And you know what? I got in there that day that they were uh, doing these for pretty much half price. Because I think I paid like $8 for this one, and this one is about 10 pounds. I don't know if 
people see all this or not. But anyway, now it's in the pan where it needs to be. Okay, we'll just clean that up. And we'll come back with a sanitized cleanup here shortly. Okay, so now, let's get that white there. Okay, now, we got the ham in the pan. And like I said, what I'm going to do with this ham is get a glaze going on it. And it's going to be a real simple brown sugar. And I'm just going to add some water. It's going to be about a cup of, a, a cup of mixture, about a fourth of a cup of uh, brown sugar that I'm going to add to this water. And then I'll put some allspice, a little bit of uh, really cloves, you know. And we don't want to do a lot of cloves. Not a lot, not a lot, y'all. Um, hang on one sec. Let me do a couple things. Okay, y'all, I'm back. And what I like to do with my ham, too, is I'm, I'm just going to turn it back this way. And I'm going to take this off because, you know what? This becomes right here. This meat here. Later on down the road. And I, I mean, we're going to get on the, on the pot of, on the stove over there with the uh, black eyed peas. Because I did already cut a little bit of this ham skin off and threw it right in there. I, I can't do all that heavy ham hock and all that. It's just a little bit too much grease. So suffice it to say, this is enough um, ham flavor in my black eyed peas. This is what I use for my peas. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skin this ham pretty much like this. And this will become cooking meat for later on, even though that, that's not really skin. I just like mine down like this. You'll see why later on when we start to slice. And it's going to be some good eating. And this, you know, the ham freezes well. It stores well. It sits in the refrigerator well. It makes the best ham sandwiches in the world. Can y'all see me? Yeah, you can see me. I'll just get all that cut off. Cutting all that off. Some people leave it on there. It depends on what kind of ham you're cooking. If I'm cooking a whole ham, I'm leaving all the skin on because that's a certain type of ham that you cook. You know, you have to know which way you want this ham to go. This is the way I want this one to go today. I want all the skin off that I can get off of it. Okay. So we're going to eat every morsel of it. Okay, we don't want nothing obstructing blocking or that we got to pull out our mouth when we're chewing. We want all this ham to be chewed up and it. Every last bit. I want that little bit of cool skin. I want that off too. Okay. Now, let's, I think that's good. Okay. So we're going to sit her just like this. And what we're going to do, we're going to take her and I'm calling her to her. I'm going to score this ham like this. And score just means run it nice across like so. that off too. Somebody get that piece. And this this will just be more for the beans. Okay. I'm just trying to get a little bit more for the beans. Y'all see what I'm doing. Y'all following. So I'm just going to score it just like so. And I'm going to even go across the front just to score it. And then I'll make a little lattice. I'll come back diagonal across it like that. So, And I'm doing this so that my sugar water, my brown sugar water and allspice and cloves seasoning will just go through and what we can just do is just do it just like this just put we're gonna pour it just right right along on that ham just like that so y'all see y'all following me see what i'm doing with this okay now all of that goodness is going to cook into that ham and basically that's it for my ham because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tint it. I'm going to put it in that oven. It's going to cook about three hours. And that's going to be some good eating, y'all. Um, you know, the ham has been cured. And you know, when the ham is cured, that sort of takes it through a cooking process. You all do know that, right? Well, newsflash. That's exactly what it is. I'm to, now this ham skin is going to simply go into a freezer bag. I'll put this inside another bag. We will have us some good old cooking meat. So hold on just a minute. I'm gonna go off. I'm gonna get a. Uh, I'm gonna get my foil going. I'm gonna foil that up, and then we're gonna start on those turkey wings. 
Okay, y'all, I'm getting ready to put a foil over here, and what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make a big old tent. I'm going to spray it on the side, so just in case it try to stick, I'll spray a little bit of Sam spray on that, too. It won't hurt nothing. Okay, so I want to tint this. This was a uh, tent, and I use double pins because that, you know, like I said, it's a 10 pound ham. So I did it big enough that I can fold the sides down. It's a lot of foil, but that's okay. I want it well tinted. Well tinted. Okay, make a good old tint. And what that'll do is it'll leave room for that hot air to circulate under there and just cook it. And it's, it's like one o'clock now and it's going to cook right up to about four o'clock. So about a good three hours and it'll be ready. Or maybe I might even take it out about two and a half. I don't want, you don't necessarily want the ham falling off the bone. It's such you want it nice and firm and cooked. And I want all my juices cooked too because I'm going to leave this in here. I can get under there later about halfway through that process and, and, and uh, spoon that uh, juice on there. But one thing I'm going to do, because I don't want that to burn, because you know, sweet stuff burns, I'm going to place a pan under this ham. Sit it in. Okay, y'all, that's me over here talking to myself. I'm having to take some rats out of here because um, that tall one is going to have to go. The ham is going to have to go one place and the turkey wings can go. Okay. I think I'm going to put my turkey wings on the bottom and my ham on the top. That's, that's what we're going to do. Okay. That's how we're going to do it. We're going to Ham on top, check the wings on the bottom because you're gonna need the, I'm gonna need that that height. And then I'm gonna get my uh whew. Are y'all hear me over here doing all this kitchen stuff, don't you? I ain't forgot you. Okay, so that's yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and get everything in the oven and I shall return. Okay, I'm back, y'all ready to do these turkey uh Parts. I got some uh, wings and I've got some drumsticks since uh, we're doing turkey. I figured try some drums in here. Tansy informed me nobody really likes drums. I said, well, they're going to like them today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of tablespoons of my complete seasoning. I've got um, six like V wings in there and I have um, four nice big turkey legs in there okay so this is going to be the meat for the day it's going to be the turkey and then we're going to do the ham and we got fried chicken so we've got lots of meat so they'll have a variety so we're going to do two tablespoons of this complete seasoning in here okay that's approximately two tablespoons and since i'm pouring on like this y'all know i'm going to go in uh with the hands and do the uh smattering on y'all smattering on I'm just gonna get down in that pot okay there we go and then we're gonna do a tablespoon of this is um I was gonna say turmeric you know what I have missed the health food store and did not get my turmeric um so let me go ahead and sprinkle on a tablespoon of curry powder curry powder Curry powder. Curry is just so wonderful. I go to the health food store to get my, because you get the pure, better flavored, you know, the real deal stuff. Okay. Now, that's my curry powder. And then I'm going to go in with a tablespoon. Everything from here, except uh, it's darling. We're going to do a tablespoon of garlic powder. Lardner's chickle boxes ran over. What happened? Oh, stop. That's cruel. <laughs> you know what? They have these little meme, uh, gimp, what, what you call them? Gifts? Yeah. Gifts on these computers. These kids love them. It keeps them entertained. It just tickles them. It just tickles them to no end. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to put a tablespoon of black pepper. I'm going to put a teaspoon of black pepper. 
so you think this is about 10 pounds of turkey meat, okay? Then I'm gonna come in with uh, some poultry seasoning. Oh, that's a brand new, you mean I actually have a brand new container of poultry seasoning? Can't believe it, y'all, can't believe it. So, we're gonna go in with about a teaspoon, a couple of teaspoons of uh, poultry seasoning. And what I'll do, like I so said, at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get my hands in and I'm gonna rub these babies down real good. We're gonna get them in the oven. And so we're gonna do about a tablespoon of salt. This is sea salt, y'all. Okay, that's about a tablespoon. So now that we got all, all of our dry seasoning on, I'm gonna put a large onion, I'm gonna cut me a large onion in there. Just notice I'm just cutting everything, nothing's going in in any particular order. Uh, nothing has to be in a particular shape. We're just putting it in. Putting it in what we can get it in. Okay, so we cut all that up and we're gonna get all that meshed around in there. And uh, not a whole lot of green pepper. So this is a real large green pepper. Just wash it and cut it in half. So half of a large green pepper. Just slicing it in there. Slice it right on in there. Slice. So, like I said, they don't have to be in any particular uh, food show order. And then two nice large stalks of celery. So, chop those babies up in there. And this is all for the flavor, honey. This is all about the flavor. Now, me, I'll eat those veggies right over my stuffing. Y'all know I'm doing stuffing. So, that's why I need this nice and flavored up. Real good and flavored up. Now, I have some uh, chicken broth. If if this does not produce enough broth for my gravy and I've got gravy left over, then I'll go back in there and I'll pour some chicken broth in there and get it real good, real good. Okay, so what I'm going to do with all of this, and the reason I cut that up at that point so I can go ahead and get all of my ingredients on to this turkey meat. And in a few minutes, it's going to be ready to go into the oven for the next three hours, okay? On 375, I already got, I already went ahead and put the ham in since I had it ready. But see how simple it is to make really delicious, and you know, I was going to say inexpensive, but you know, any more than turkey wings, a pack of, I think that pack of turkey wings was like four pieces in there, seven bucks. So turkey wing, I mean everything is expensive. Now, I, you know what? That was these beef pieces, and I, I I fixed them many times. And you could go in that commissary, you could get like a five pound pack, maybe five dollars. And about the time I guess they start thinking, oh, so people really like these. I had been buying that meat, I know, fifteen years, and all of a sudden, I don't know, if beef went up. All of a sudden, you know. I didn't know about it if it did. I went there one day and those same five dollar packs were thirteen dollars. So I said, you know what? As soon as whoever the powers may be catch on to the fact that people like this, we can go ahead and jack this price up. So I, I don't know how it happened that because I used to even buy those uh they were beef strips. They were just pure beef. Was, you know, a lot of fat on them. Of course, you had to cut the fat off of them. A lot of lean beef on them. Honey, they put those prices up so high. You know what I can't, I feel like to stop doing? Stop buying them. I say, I ain't going to complain about them and buy them. If they cost too much, just quit buying them. But you know, we have to just mind, you know, what we do sometimes. And if you cook a lot like I do, you have to be mindful of price. It's not that I cook all the time so much as just I cook a lot. We had that debate yesterday. Talking about it, it would be would, would be very inexpensive for me to go on a pescatarian diet. No, not for me it wouldn't. If I was cooking for one person, yeah, maybe. But I don't cook for one person. It's very difficult for me to cook for one person. I guess I could if I tried hard enough, but it just seemed awful cooking a meal for one person. That's a, did I almost feel selfish. I feel guilty. If I try, even when I make a sandwich, I'll holler through, hey, anybody else want a sandwich? <laughs> it's 
so that's just me. That was just, that, that's just me, honey. That's the nature of the beast. Okay, I think everything is well saturated here um, with the seasoning. I really trust. I'm just going to sprinkle, you know, just for GP. Just on top right there. Just going to sprinkle a little bit more sea salt. Sea salt is not supposed to be as bad as regular salt. I guess, and it's not the salt, it's the sodium. Let me correct that. Okay, that's my hands off there. Okay, so now, what I need to do is just go off and get me a piece of a uh, fall ready. For this, I gotta wash my hands and do a little bit of a clean up. And I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, I've got my fall ready. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a Top of, I sprayed the top of that foil anyway, just in case. You know, we don't want nothing sticking to that. Okay. I just make sure we get it good and tight. And you know, this is that cast uh, iron container. It, it, this the pan probably weighs 20 pounds. It's a, it's a nice, uh, like a Dutch oven. It just doesn't have a top on it. It's that nice cast iron. And this will cook. Seal. I'm not going to even have to, I know I'm going to have to take the top off this because that juice will cook up in there, baby. And them, them buddies there, we want them falling there. We want these falling off the bone. That's what we want, these falling right off the bone. So, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to put them into that 375 degree oven for the next three hours, y'all. So, everything's going into the oven. Um get over here. Let's get right here. I got all my that's my pot right there. My black eyed peas are in there already. I got those black eyed peas in there. I got one pound of black eyed peas, six cups of water, and about um, half a pound of ham skin that I shaved off. And that's all I need to put in there because I got black eyed peas left over. Uh, from sometime uh, a little bit ago. Maybe I, I forget. Oh, Thanksgiving, I think I cooked peas. And I got some, uh, about another pound left over. So I'm going to, when those get done, I'm just going to add these ones that I already had to them. And that's going to help to flavor them the more. And they're going to go in this little pot right here. And we will have our black eyed pea situation settled. And my mac and cheese and my stuffing is still in the fridge. I'm going to take it out in a few minutes and about 1.30 I'm going to go to, well it's almost about 1.30. We'll see about, well since we're not eating to 4, I probably don't need to about 2 o'clock, 2.30. I'm going to go ahead and put it in and let it start heating. And by that time everything will be done and um, we'll be good to go. I was going to say I was going to make cornbread, but since we got stuffing, I will not. We don't need all that. Okay, now. We're going to get, um. Now, I'm not supposed to lift anything here, but here's what I do. I get everything set so for a hot second. Okay, so all my oven stuff is in the oven. My stove stuff is on the stove. Let me show y'all. See that? Everything's in the oven. And then later on, I'll get my other two pans in there. So we're good to go for Sunday. I was going to say Sunday dinner for... Uh, New Year's Day dinner. So y'all hang in there with me and I'll be back shortly. Okay, y'all. Dinner is served. Cornbread, black eyed peas, turkey and drumstick and gravy. That's my stuffing from leftovers. See what leftovers do when you fix them up right? That's my mac and cheese. And I, I, I froze this with the plastic, so I left the plastic on it, put foil on it, and that keeps it nice and moist. Collard greens on the back burner. Those are also from, guess when? Thanksgiving. And this is some chicken, fried chicken. We had fried chicken last night. We also had quiche, but we're good. So, thank y'all for tuning in with me. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for 2019. So, until I decide to cook again, y'all keep those prayers going up until the blessings come down. Love you guys. Toodaloo.